Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video I'll be going through the Essendon vs Western Bulldogs game. Going through who went well, who um, who had some shockers. We had a couple of shockers in this game. And how um, it really is a case of do we want to pick and choose a couple of these guys as a couple of them actually had really good performances. Um, as we enter the last, what are we in, the last five rounds of the season. So we're really looking, are these guys capable of going probably 110 plus? average across the five rounds so 550 points can they accumulate that in five rounds and um there's only a couple here that i really would actually be choosing if i had to but um before that remember to uh remember to like and subscribe turn the notification bell on so you know when i upload and let's get into the video so, as you can see here, um, Laverde138 was the top scorer. Uh, he was the one that actually played out. Yes, Ridley was the one that was injured. So, he just got all the junk ball. Aston were playing a slow style of game, and it really suited those um, three or four defenders that they, well, the top five were all defenders here, pretty much. Well, Parrish is 108, but take him out, and then you have top seven guys are all defenders, um, aside from Parrish, so seven of eight. Yeah, they just all started to get the ball, and then when they really needed to move it on to actually win the game, they all just stopped. So, um, I wouldn't look into this at all, because all of these guys have like 40, 50, 60 games in the last like two or three weeks, so I think it was just a one-off to try and combat the way Western Bulldogs play. I don't think it's a game style that they'll pick up. I mean, Andy McGrath has actually started to score, but he's not reliable. Had him, pre um, had him, and I don't think I ever want to go back to him, to be honest. Just with the way that Essendon are playing at the moment, I think their game style is a lot more flexible to change, and Andy McRae, Redmond, and stuff like that are guys that I think will really struggle if they go to just wanting to actually get it to their midfielders first. Um, so, obviously, Laverde, 41, 36, 47, um, 14, was on 77 at half time. Ridley pretty much the same was on 85 at half 31 and then got injured in the last I think Ridley's injury might have caused a change in the way that they got, they did it and um, So I think he was one of the reasons why they decided not to or kick it around the back as much Kelly as well uh, 47 5 46 15 very weird that he only had five points in the second but then again the, this whole game style for Essendon was off, I think, a little bit. But they ended up um, obviously getting good points, but they ended up losing, so it didn't really matter. Um, Parrish, 108. He was really good. Got stuck on the bench, so didn't start scoring until the 16th minute, so halfway through the first. And I think that probably what caused him not getting a 115. But he still did his job getting a 108 and got me towards a really, really good round rank and a really good rank rise again, so that was really good. Andy McGuire, as I said, a 106, 25, 32, 28, 16. Pretty consistent. Just that fourth quarter was a little bit off from him. And that's why he only got to 106 and didn't push on to that 120 score. Redman, a clean 100, uh, 43, 23, 24, 10. Just fell away in the last quarter here, as you can see. And that was the reason why he, I guess, struggled a little bit. And only got to the ton. Um, Heppel, 92, just a really good first quarter again, 16, 15, 18, after that, really struggled. Nick Martin, I'm pretty sure, really consistent, that's what I remember. And yeah, got to an, a 91, he isn't looking like he will be an All-Australian at this moment, just because you have Dacos and um, Goulden well ahead of him. And But still a really good um, winger in that, the third best in the comp. Like there is a breakaway top three at this point, and I think Martin's just that unlucky third guy. So they will, I think they have to go with wingers this year, but uh, we'll wait and see with that. Merritt, a down game and an 88. We knew this was a tough matchup for him, but not, I'm not terribly worried about him. I mean, he still put up an 88 in a bad game for him and could have easily put up more. He just had, um, he had the tackle taken away late and a handball taken away here. You know, could have easily had another couple of um, another couple of tackles there. Uh, um, got not well. He already kicked a goal, so just another couple of marks or whatever. But I'm pretty sure don't Essendon Essendon play the Swans, so you will see probably him or um, Parish tagged. 
but then you've got this run here that we're really looking forward to so hopefully they can just get away and I mean the Swans did allow um, Sarong to, sc uh, to score well on the weekend um, in this last week but um, we'll wait and see with how Merritt and Parrish go I know one of them is going to get Robottom the other one's probably going to get Mills or Parker but we'll wait and see on that one Zirk Thatcher got an 84 but he's not really relevant as he'll get another like 40 or something out there Langford 82 good in the first half horrible second Wright, Caldwell, Phillips, um, Durham, Rolfe, Cox, um, Hobbs really struggled, and that's really good for me that he really did struggle and really, really, really um, didn't didn't do enough. And um, so people who still hold him, which is a very few, um, he had a massive cash um, drop. And I mean, if we look at Hobbs now, he went down forty three k and really, really just made it um made a big difference because that was what 40 odd points to keys who a lot of people are still getting out because his role is cooked now and he's relying on goals basically to get to a decent score and i'll happily take that um that keys run that he had but um it just looks like adelaide have stuffed up that midfield <laughs> rotation to be honest um and it didn't look like laird coming back uh laird being out helped them at all um, Stringer, Snelling, Hind, Brian, and Perkins. Um, then we move over to Western Bulldogs, and the main man, Bontempelli, had a little bit slow fourth quarter, but job done. One to eight, uh, VC on the first night was really good, and that VC was basically wrapped up in the first, um, well, in the first, uh, at three quarter time, he was on 107. I was like, that's, he's going to get a, at least a 10 point quarter here, got a 21 pointer. Would have liked to have him seen him go on uh, 140, but 128 is enough. Libba 120, he's definitely someone that you could look at, and I think he is the only one that I would look at necessarily from the Bulldogs. Uh, 128, 120, obviously for Libba, and he was just dominant in the first, um, in the first, in that first uh, three quarters, I guess, especially the second and third. Uh, Smith, Basil Smith, uh, he just did really well. A really consistent all-round display. A lot of tackling for him. So he's one that I think we might get lucky on. We might get lucky that he keeps that forward status. And keeping that forward status and potentially moving clubs could actually really help him. Um, depends where he would move. Um, Geelong would be quite a tough place, I think, to go. Especially averaging what he's going to be around that 86 mark. Um, but certainly an option if he is going to move because he could become um, an inside mid again and get that 40-50% inside mid roll, and that would really help. Daniel 109, back to his best, basically 32-24-16-37. Tim English, a 98, uh, just annoying he didn't get that ton. Would have been good, but a slow start obviously hampered him, but came back really strong in the second half. Seems like he does that quite a lot. He gets beaten in the first half and then comes back strong. Trelaw, 92, uh, just struggling the last couple weeks, but should be fine overall. Ugo Hayden, Norton, don't really matter. Bailey Dale struggling, so wouldn't be grabbing him anytime soon. Ed Richards again, another game where he's just sort of struggling. And McRae got his 20 disposals, but again, just struggling and will lose his forward status, I think, next year and just become one of those iffy type of mids. I mean, he's still averaging like 96 or whatever, but he just has that um, role change and potential disaster written all over him. Waitman, Scott, Poulter, uh, Baker, Vandermeer, no one else really too matters too much. So that is the video. And if I go back to the main screen, there we go. That's the Essendon versus Western Bulldogs review. Bont and basic Bont and Libba and Parish did well, and that was about it. Um, so it was another really good start for me on the to the week, getting my VC down. Libba, um, obviously not in my team, but still a really good score from him. Tim English did all right, just another average game basically, and obviously Parish did all right, but Merritt did struggle, but he'll bounce back in a couple of weeks' time because he has that. Uh, West Coast Eagles and North Run. So that's the video, and I'll see you guys in another video. Thanks, guys. Goodbye.